welcome to a series on herpes simplex keratai we know that it's not a simple disease in fact it's very tricky just like our lives because its presentations are very diverse there are few fixed treatment protocols at the most we have some guiding principles which makes its management confusing to many that's why i'm trying to make a simplified version in which i will try to cover all the common presentations which are of relevance to a general ophthalmologist but i will omit difficult scenarios through these cases i am sharing what i have learned in my 21 years of practice let's start with epithelial infection and its sequelae first we have a brief overview and then cases as we know classical dendrite is a linear epithelial defect with branching pattern here virus replication is restricted to epithelium only when dendrites widen and take a map like shape then it is known as geographic ulcer in fact in any epithelial defect with scalloped margins we must keep this as a differential diagnosis this we have already discussed by adulthood all of us have this virus so why it becomes active in some is not clear mostly it's idiopathic but in some it has a predisposing factor like fever systemic immunosuppressant use of topical steroids in certain glaucoma medications treatment means stopping the viral replication usually we start with acyclovir ointment in five times a day dose beauty of acyclovir is that it selectively stops viral replication without affecting dna replication in normal cells because it's mostly activated inside virus infected cells that's why it's very safe and effective as a result most dendrites heal in 7 days geographic may take 10 to 14 days we may add topical antibiotic to prevent super infection once ulcer heals then it is given for one additional week to kill any residual virus but dose is reduced to 3 times a day gencyclovir is another option of antiviral with the same dose and duration we rarely need to give topical treatment beyond 3 weeks if any ulcer does not heal in 3 weeks we have to reconsider our diagnosis and if diagnosis is right then management needs to be changed as prolonged use of acyclovir ointment in 5 times a day dose is epitheliotoxic this toxicity is due to vehicle of ointment rather than drug itself with this basic understanding let's go through some cases first case is a typical geographic ulcer as mentioned earlier steroids can be a trigger for virus activation and it happened here also when this elderly lady got injury she was diagnosed as post trauma uveitis and put on topical beta methasone later on she developed this defect her steroids were stopped and she was referred it's a classical presentation with map like shape and clean clear base there was no ac reaction at that time we started that typical regime within 5 days size reduced ointment was tapered and in 2 weeks it was a normal looking cornea all patients who are on steroids are at a risk for viral activation thankfully it happens rarely as we can see in our cataract surgery patients who rarely develop viral epithelial disease in post op period if condition permits steroids should be stopped otherwise continued under close monitoring till defect closes some frequent queries are do we treat all cases with topical only or do we need oral so if we compare the aqueous concentration achieved with 5 times topical versus oral acyclovir we can see that topical levels are better than oral these levels are much more than the required strength in addition topical is very economical too this is the reason we usually prefer topical but there are certain scenarios where we prefer oral mostly we do so when ocular surface is bad and we don't want the acyclovir to cause further toxicity oral was used a lot in usa because topical acyclovir was not available and the drug which was available had a very frequent cumbersome dosing schedule in oral we have two options acyclovir 400 mg 5 times a day or its pro drug well as i could wear 500 mg 3 times a day this dose is considered therapeutic dose for hsv the second query regarding combined topical and oral i have never used it but in literature it is usually advocated for immunocompromised people now let's see some clinical scenario when we required oral therapy this 70 year female had undergone cataract surgery 9 days back where she had some complication 
as a result she was on a lot of oral and topical medications when she came to us there was a central epithelial defect this defect had scalloped margins in addition there were multiple faint linear projections all around the defect which made me suspect that there may be a geographical ulcer rose bengal staining better illuminated these projections we could not pick any mngc on jimsa but on strong clinical suspicion we went ahead and treated this as a geographical ulcer here oral was our choice as surface was already bad due to multiple medications within 3 days decrease in size was noticed and that too when our scraping has increased the size of original defect in one week defect was 90% healed by 10th day it had healed completely and dose of antiviral was reduced we can choose either of these doses this dose is known as prophylactic dose antiviral was stopped on 16th day we must stain all epithelial defects and ulcers and we will be surprised to pick dendrite or geographic defect even when we never suspected them particularly in our scenario where patients are frequently given antibiotic steroid combination by rmp or a chemist and oral is good choice in case of bad surface let's go through another presentation this lady had complained of only one week duration she was initially diagnosed as viral ulcer and treated at some center with virsen in three times dose only in addition to ketoflox and oral anti allergic after 4 days her records mentioned blepharitis antibiotic was increased in one hourly dose inflomex ointment was added she came to us on 11th the next day as we can see here in this case the base was not clean rather had a diffuse haze 360 degree superficial vascularization there was mebomitis too now it was important for us to know the cause of this haze is it secondary bacterial infection or concomitant herpetic stromal disease or bad ocular surface there was no discharge stromal infiltration was very grayish white and not yellowish white as we see in bacterial super infection secondly it was a diffuse haze but maximum in the periphery and it's a known fact that all viral epithelial defects near the limbus incite more cellular reaction all these factors and presence of 360 degree vascularization made me suspect ocular surface disease as the most probable reason of stromal infiltrate still we did scraping grams was negative and jimsa was positive we substituted topical with oral antiviral antibiotic was reduced to 3 hourly and we stopped inflomex here to response was very quick within 3 days defect showed remarkable improvement and complete healing in one week so just to revise defects near limbus have more cellular reaction if in doubt about secondary infection do scraping or refer the patient to a specialist now coming to a few common mistakes which i have noticed frequently in referred cases many times these patients are started on low dose steroids i don't know the exact reason for this but i presume that this urge comes because uh, doctors maybe they want to prevent these ghost scars which occasionally develop these are the result of mild anterior stromal inflammation underneath the defect can we prevent these scars actually if anything can help that is early defect closure low dose steroid does not help in early closure of dendrite rather they do have a huge potential to cause damage how Actually virus is residing in epithelium and body was getting rid of them by using its own immune mechanism and with the help of antiviral. When we give steroids we alter the immune defenses of cornea. It lets the virus stay for long and even virus or antigens can go deeper in the stroma leading to increased chances of stromal disease. So we should not give steroids in pure epithelial disease. Second common mistake is when we don't recognize the sequelae of resolved dendritic or geographical ulcer. This patient was referred as non-healing HSK. She was on oral as well as topical ACV since long. Sometimes epithelium remains rough after healing. It does not mean that we have to continue antiviral. In fact, our drugs are not allowing the surface to heal. And obviously oral acyclovir also has no role here. Another sequelae of healing is dendritic form keratopathy. 
it develops when done right and particularly when geographical ulcer heal resulting in a heaped up epithelium which also has a linear branching shape we must remember that there is no epithelial defect so it's not a ulcer this epithelium flattens gradually these sequelae need lubricants and patience only now coming to last case which is fairly common presentation where ulcer stops healing after showing some initial improvement this referred patient had a nicely documented history and clinical picture topical acv was started in 5 times dose in addition to lubricants in 3 days improvement was noted but then it stopped healing further on 7th day vitamin c was added and lubrication increased this is the picture after 19 days of treatment at this juncture he was referred it was a timely refer as we have mentioned earlier that if ulcer has not healed in 3 weeks we need to reconsider management you can appreciate the diffuse haze and scar which is underneath a persistent epithelial defect edges of defect were heap this picture was suggestive of neurotrophic ulcer also called metaherpetic though it can happen in the first episode too but i have seen them mostly in recurrent cases they are the result of combination of factors related to loss of corneal innervation mainly first step in the treatment is obviously to stop topical antiviral to prevent toxicity now do we actually need any antiviral at this stage when patient has already received it for 3 weeks is there any virus still there there is no way to know these answers so just to stay on the safer side people usually give oral in prophylactic dose secondly we should stop all unnecessary medication all drops should be preservative free if possible i always tell my patient that if there is no response in one week i will go ahead with tarsorafi which usually works like magic his treatment was started as expected there was no improvement in one week so we did temporary tarsorafi rapid improvement was noted same treatment continued in 3 weeks not only defect healed but surface also became very smooth so i opened tarso if surface is rough then i wait for one additional week before opening tarso tarsorafi is extremely helpful in neurotrophic cases literally works like a magic wand so if viral epithelial defect does not heal in 3 weeks please reassess Vitamin C is helpful in collagen synthesis but it has no role in viral defect closure. So what works best in neurotrophic cases is tarsorafi. I hope that this simplified approach helps you in healing your HSV ulcer cases. Thanks.